Presentation Skills for Design Students, Episode 14. Hello and welcome to Presentation Skills for Design Students, the podcast dedicated to helping design students everywhere become confident, creative communicators. My name's Christina Cantors, and I'm here to help you speak with confidence, create compelling presentations, and communicate your ideas like a ninja. So let's get to it. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 14. I'm so excited for this episode because I've got a lot of really good tips to share with you, and it's all about how to get a good night's sleep. Now, you may be thinking, what has this got to do with presentation skills? But I'm telling you, it's really important and it has everything to do with delivering a good, strong, confident presentation. So today I've got five of my tips to share with you in order to get a better night's sleep. And they might be different to the ones that you may have heard before. So stick around for that. But first, of course, let's hear this week's story from studio, which is from Brendan, who is studying architecture at Monash University in Melbourne. Take it away, Brendan. So I've been up like all night preparing my um, layout for my presentation. I hadn't really had any time to think about what I was going to say. I thought, oh, I'll just go off the cuff because that's sort of what they want you to do. They want you to be able to get up there and then just explain your ideas and how you got to your design. I was really tired and I had like no water for like two days, so that didn't help. I got up there and I started I started off alright and then I, I think I said something that sort of tripped up on my words and I got really nervous and it's the first time it ever happened but I had a panic attack. I didn't know what was happening because I'd never had a panic attack before but like I got really dizzy and really hot and I actually had to like sit down and I like had nearly passed out so it was really embarrassing for my whole class like... I stopped making sense. Like, I couldn't even talk properly. I couldn't hear, like, what anyone was saying to me. I got, like, tunnel vision. I just sat down. I had to, like, calm myself down. And I think, yeah, I think the not sleeping didn't really help. Get a lot of sleep the night before, even if you're nervous. I don't know how, but just try and get more sleep. Thank you, Brendan, for sharing that story with us. Mmm, get a good sleep before your presentation. I like that. You know what? That actually relates to this week's episode. Anyway, if you want to share your story from studio like Brendan, it's really easy. All you have to do is go to designdrawspeak.com slash story and record your story there. I'd love to hear from you. I really enjoy hearing everyone's stories and there's something that we can all learn from your stories. Okay, let's get into today's topic, which is tips from a sleep deprived architect on how to get better quality of sleep. Now it's something that we all know, right? As design students, you're often sleep deprived. It's just a given. And we often blame the immense amounts of work required. So you know, our drawings, models, presentation boards, and having to get up every hour to check on your 12-hour render. And also, unfortunately, what I found was that it actually becomes student culture as well, with, with the opinion being the less sleep that you get, clearly the more work you're getting done. And then if you're not careful and you get caught up in this, you start feeling guilty going to bed knowing that most of your peers are still up getting more work done than you. It's it's actually really terrible. Now, I've suffered through my fair share of sleep deprivation during during my years as an architecture student. However, I must say I've never been good at pulling all-nighters. I think I've only ever done one all-nighter and I, I, I remember driving home from uni as the sun was rising at 7am and let me tell you, it was the most depressing thing ever. What I used to do actually was instead of staying up late, I would go to bed at about 11 or 12 and then wake up at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. instead as I tend to work better in the mornings. But 
I must say by the end of semester, I think as, as most of, most of you would agree, I was so severely affected by just the continuous lack of sleep. It actually took me a good month at the end of each semester to actually feel normal again and to actually regain the color in my face. Cause I just went really pale and sort of death like, which is pretty horrible. Now we all know that sleep's important. I'm not going to tell you how important it is. We all know that we need seven to eight hours a night, blah, blah, blah. That's what they tell us. But I know that, and I know that in an ideal world, we'd all get our work done by 10 PM so that we could all get a decent sleep. But the reality is we just get loaded up with work. We have other commitments like part-time jobs, family stuff, um, sports teams that you're involved in, church stuff, you know, all those sorts of things. And let's be honest here. We also are really good at procrastinating. So all of this leads us to pulling massive hours in the studio and sleeping very little or sleeping under under your desk or just not sleeping at all. So that's just reality, I, I know. But you know what's also reality? If you want to be prepared, confident and on the ball for your presentation, then getting enough quality sleep is absolutely crucial. And you can't just depend on drinking copious amounts of coffee or Red Bull. This will just heighten your nerves. Okay. Now I'm I'm not going to go on about the benefits of sleep, but in a nutshell, it does make you smarter. It does reduce the amount of stress that you have, and it also helps to improve your concentration. So that's all I'm going to say. You know how you feel when you've had a good sleep or not. Now, I can't tell you to sleep more because that's just, you already know that and that's up to you to figure that out. But I, and I know that workloads and procrastination do get the better of us. And the fact is you are going to get less sleep towards the end of each semester. So today I'd like to share with you five of my tips for getting better quality sleep just to help you in any way possible. Because any, any little bit of any way that you can help yourself get better sleep is going to make a difference. So my first tip, exercise. Now, I've always been an exercise junkie, but when uni work picked up, I would find myself exercising less and less. However, I found that when I stopped exercising regularly, I'd actually find it hard to sleep. I'd go to bed mentally exhausted, but physically I'd be buzzing because I just hadn't expended that physical energy. So I got to the point where I would force myself to get out of the house and go for a run. And it was only quick, like 20 minutes or so. And I found that it just really helped me clear my head, refocus. And for some reason, if I was having problems resolving a design, the solution would often come to me during a run. Seriously. So for better sleep, I highly recommend sticking with some form of exercise. And I know it's really easy to neglect it and just say, oh, you're too busy, but I don't care. Seriously, even if it's just a simple walk around the block. So no, don't make an excuse like no time or if it's too hot or too cold. If you have no time, you know what you can do? Burpees. Nothing will get your heart rate up like a few sets of burpees. Do a hundred. You know how long that takes me? Six minutes and 30 seconds. It is one of the quickest heart raising workouts ever. And you literally do them on the spot. So if you have space in your room for a yoga mat, you have space for burpees. And if you don't know what burpees are, I'll put a link to them in the show notes. So tip number one exercise. Tip number two, try and shut down your screens early. Now I know this is going to be a tricky one and it depends on the sort of project that you're doing, but this is, this is how looking at screens late at night affects you. So we have a a sleep hormone in our bodies called melatonin and this makes us drowsy and kicks off our sleep cycle. Now the bright light that is emitted from backlit screens from your computer, your phone, your iPad, etc. They that actually disrupts the production of this hormone because your brain is thinking, "Oh, it's oh, it's the sun, it's time to get up." And there's studies on this. Some studies have reported 
um, an increase in stress levels in students when they've been texting late at night. This it, it triggers insomnia, things like that. And and there was a study done by the University of Texas that reported higher stress levels and poorer sleep in students who texted or were online within two hours before going to bed. So a way, and so I know this is tricky because often a lot of work that we do these days is on the computer. But if you can help it, try doing non-computer work before going to bed. So if you do have any hand drawing tasks or model making tasks or whatever, try and leave them until the, the few hours before you go to bed and just see if that helps. It's all about just reducing the amount of bright lights that you're exposed to in the hours before bed. My third tip for getting better quality sleep, have a bedtime routine. Now it doesn't matter how late it is, if you can get into a, a routine that will calm you down and de-stress you before bed, it will help. So what you can do is turn the lights down, maybe have a hot tea, a non-caffeinated tea that, that is, have a stretch, read a book, listen to some calming music, or maybe a podcast. Actually, that's an idea. Maybe I could do a soothing pre-bed episode, like a meditation episode. Hmm. Maybe. I'll consider that later. Anyway, um, so it doesn't matter how late it is. Personally, I used to turn the lights off. I used to put on some music and I would actually just do some stretching, just some really calm stretching. And it's good when you've been sitting for hours as well. And I, it was only 15 minutes. It would take me 15 minutes before bed and I really do think it helped me. So, and and now, now I have a pre-bed routine of I always drink a, a hot cup of chamomile tea because that helps to soothe and soothe me and calm me down. And I also take magnesium, which helps to relax your muscles, which helps sleep as well. There's a bonus tip for you, magnesium. Tip number four, use essential oils to help you sleep. Now, I have never, I actually only started using lavender, I think about a month ago. And this is the first time I've ever used essential oils before. But I heard that lavender can actually really help calm you down and help you sleep. So I've been giving it a go and I honestly think it works. And you don't have to even put it on your pillow or sniff it or put it in a burner or anything. What I do is I actually put a few drops on my feet, the underside of my feet, and just rub it into the soles of my feet because apparently it gets absorbed a lot better through the feet. And so if you don't like the smell of lavender, it doesn't even matter. Just rub it in your feet and and you're all good to go. And I actually find that it does help. So it might help you. Give it a go. And the final, the fifth and final tip for getting better quality sleep is write down the tasks that you want to do for the next day. And this helps to reduce your stress because it's getting all your thoughts out onto paper and essentially clearing your head so that you go to bed with a clear mind and that will then help you get a more restful night's sleep. You could also create a list of things that you accomplished that day, so a list of stuff that you've you've done and that, that will help you help you feel good about what you've accomplished. Oh, and also if, you've, if you're lying there and you, and you pop up with some idea in your mind, just write that, write that down as well. So it's all about just clearing your mind out and just reducing all that the clutter of thoughts in your head that, and that will hopefully help you get a better night's sleep. So there you have it, my top five tips for a better night's sleep. Just a quick recap. Number one, exercise. Do burpees if you want. Number two, do non-screen tasks late at night. So try not to look at your screen too late. Number three, have a bedtime routine, no matter how late it is. Number four, an essential oil like lavender can help you sleep. And number five, write down your tasks for the next day to clear your head. So I hope those tips are helpful for you. I'd love to hear how you go with them. Actually, yeah, that's your challenge for the week. I want you to 
implement at least one of these tips this week and see if it makes a difference. So even if you're not studying at the moment, we can all do something to improve our quality of sleep. So even if it's just as simple as, okay, it's not very simple and it's really hard, but try turning, uh, not looking at your phone or your iPad or your laptop within an hour before bedtime. So try having that um, electronic shutdown an hour before bed and just read a book or do some stretching or go for a walk or write stuff by hand, things like that. So just try that. So that's your challenge of the week. And I'd love to hear how you go. Just leave a comment in the show notes at designjawspeak.com slash 014. And that, everyone, brings us to the end of episode 14. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Sleep is very important. And if you can develop these good habits now, it's going to help you throughout the rest of your working life as well. If you've enjoyed this show, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a rating and a review in the iTunes store. It just helps the podcast get discovered by more awesome people like yourself. And of course, don't forget to tell your friends and anyone else who you think would like presentation and communication tips. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you next week for another episode. This has been Presentation Skills for Design Students, helping you become a confident, creative communicator.